Hello, everyone. My name is Winona. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. I'm the leader of Busted Knuckles, the adult recovery ministry over at Roadhouse Biker Church. Hope you guys are having a great day. It's so hot outside. It's oppressively hot. And so, but let, let's, uh, let's do a devotional, shall we? Before we get started, though, let's give it to God. All right, dear Father God, we come to you with just our grateful hearts. We're grateful for the gifts that you choose to give us and bless us with, Father. We thank you for these things. We thank you for the steps that you show us that we can go through to get healthy and to get get right with you, Father. And so, Lord, I just pray for our nation, pray for, for just the guidance that you can give us and give give our, our, our leaders, Father God. Ask that your hand be on every action that the governments go through. And Father God, I just ask for blessings on each person watching this video. I ask for blessings on my family, on my friends, myself too, Father. I'm, I'm grateful for what you've blessed me with, and so I just pray for continued blessing. Father, just thank you so much for what you've given us. In your son's name, amen. Amen. So today we are in the book of Luke. Um, it is the parable of the lost son. Um, this is Luke 15. It's going to be verses 11 through 24. You know, we've used this, this parable in our recovery for different steps. It, it, it covers such a vast um, array of lessons in just this one parable. So today we're going to use this parable um, for amends. It's step nine. And uh, let me go ahead and get started and read this. Like I said, it's Luke 15 and it's verses 11 through 24. There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in the whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to feed the, to the fields to feed the pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that even the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired hands, hired servants have food to spare, and here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. And he ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For the son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and now he is found. So they began to celebrate. There's so many different things happening within just those verses right there. The parable of the lost son. You know, and, and normally this was the younger son. Um... You know, and when the father passed away, the oldest son would get the majority of it, get at least two thirds, and the younger one would get about a third. Sometimes before death, the father maybe wanting to retire, let things, you know, hand things over to his kids, he, he may initiate this division of his estate before he passes on. But what, what happened here was just a complete lack of respect, disregard of the respect that this father should have gotten from his younger son. This, the younger son could care less who this man was. Um, it reminds me of so many of us in our um, 
heavy in our addictions, that we have disregard, we have no respect for anyone. And that was this, this young man, this younger son. He told his dad, hey, give me what's owed to me. Give me my inheritance now. Basically, he's telling his dad, I could, you know, to me, you're already dead, is basically what this boy is telling his son or his dad. And the dad, bless his heart, because he loved his son. He gave it to him. He let his son do his thing. You know, and if you think about it, God does that for us also. He lets us do our thing. And he waits patiently for us, as the son did here, to come to our senses. And so um, that's what happened here. The younger son, you know, he wanted to live the life that he wanted to live. He didn't want to work hard, didn't want to earn that inheritance. He just felt, hey, it's mine. My dad owes it to me. I'm, I'm a son of this man. I want it now. He got it. His dad loved him so much that his dad gave it to him, let him do his thing. And so this boy, his, he came to his senses and, you know, being Jewish, he's out slopping the hogs. That right there was, was bad because pigs to the Jews was an unclean animal. Ugh, you know, they stayed away. And he was to the point where he was so hungry that he, he was willing to eat what the pigs ate because no one was helping him out. No one in this other country that he went to, once his money was gone, those friends that he had, those women that he thought were gonna love him and take care of him, they were gone. And um, he had no one, he had no one. So he finally came to his senses and said, you know what, I'm not worthy to be called the son of this man, but I'm gonna ask him to hire me back on because at least this man takes care of his servants and perhaps he'll take care of me also. So he did go back to his dad and his dad being the good father that he was loved this son. He was patient because I think that this dad knew that his son was going to crash and burn, especially when the famine hit. I think that this dad sitting on his porch or where, whatever, waiting for that boy to come back. And finally on the horizon, there was a figure and he knew it was his son. He ran to him. He ran to him, embraced him, put a robe on him, give him a ring, kill the fatted calf. Let's celebrate my son who was gone, who was dead, has come back, has come back. That is the love of a father. So let's read our life recovery devotional. We are in uh, step nine, and this is going to be day six. Something from nothing. And again, the reading was from Luke 15, 11 to 24. Some of us may have stolen things from others, but now have no means of paying them back. How can we face the people that we've wronged when we have nothing to offer? Since working through step eight, we should be willing to humbly approach the people that we've wronged. But if we can't repay our debts, what's the point? Well, Jesus told the story about a young man who demanded an early inheritance and left home. He wasted his fortune on riotous living. He hit bottom and, and so to speak, he decided to go back to his father. He had nothing left of what he had taken and no means with which to ever repay his father. We can imagine his feelings as he would rehearse what he would say to his dad. So, re so he returned to his father, and while he was still a long way off, the father saw him coming. And filled with love and, compa and compassion, he ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His father said to the servants, quick, we must celebrate with a feast, for my son, the son of mine was dead and now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. So the party began. Again, that's Luke 15. We may feel like we have nothing to offer, but to the people who love us, the people who love us, we are more important than anything else we could give them. They love us. They only want to see us well. And for us to get well, that's the most important thing to them. God bless these people that love us. In Romans 13, 8, the Apostle Paul tells us, 
owe nothing to anyone except for your obligation to love one another. Though we may not be able to repay our debts right away, we can still offer our love. That's what most of most of our families, that's what they want from us. They want our love. Instead, we were mean and cruel and disrespectful, but they still, like God, like the father in the story, loved us and waited patiently for us to come to our senses. Again, God bless these people. God bless these people. Making amends can be the richest of any gift. Amen. So think about that, that, you know, we probably hurt some people, show disrespect to people, but when we come to our senses, especially with our loved ones, they're waiting. Most of them are waiting patiently for us only because they love us and they're willing to embrace us and, and, and bring us back into the family. We have to do our part and show love also, humbly show love. We have to earn back some of that respect, earn back some of that trust, but they love us and they've been waiting patiently for us to come back to our senses. So making amends is yes, saying you're sorry, but making amends is the action that we take. And sometimes we can't repay a debt with, with money but we can repay debt with love. We can repay a debt with just service to these people. Amen? Because they love us. Amen. Amen. So, hey, you guys, have a great day today. We've got um, some other little um, devotions I want to do. We've got to start on our roadmap number nine because we are in a new month. We're almost a week into it. And I haven't gotten to it yet, so that's going to be next on the agenda. All right, so God bless everyone. Have a great day.